this week's episode, we're going to kit bash an armored train. So I've been kind of wanting to do this episode ever since I left Adepticon. Uh, when I was out there, I picked up the new Blood and Valor uh, expansion, End of Empires. And in that, uh, in that book, they have a scenario that involves a train. So it's kind of like a, like a forest on one side and a train in the center uh, and kind of buildings and structures on the one side. So it's kind of a, you know, a battle map, a scenario. And uh, I kind of envision an armored train on, uh, on this battlefield. So I've been kind of, you know, trying to search out for the right train model. Uh, and uh, I kind of wanted to kit bash something really cheap. So I, I found at the Home Depot, actually, I found this plastic train kit which is uh, pretty awesome. You get uh, these four pieces here, and then you get all these uh, extra you know, power lines and tracks and signs and all sorts of stuff on there. So that just came out at the Home Depot, so uh, hope, you know maybe your local Home Depot still has it, but you could get any uh, cheap plastic train set that they come out at Christmas time. Uh, that one was only 26 bucks, so it was really, really cheap. Um, but that... That's a pretty good train, uh, which was awesome about it. It was 28 mil, so it kind of fit the miniatures perfectly. Uh, but I needed to add something to make it an armored train, right? right? That's just an ordinary train. Uh, so I had a bunch of uh, model kits left from when I was a kid, actually. I, I, I collected a bunch of these kind of uh, tank kits and stuff like that. Uh, I got a few here. I'm not going to show you all of them, but, you know, just kits like that uh, and some of the pieces were missing and some of them uh, my son built some of them and they're half built so I just took whatever was left out of those sprues and I figured maybe I could kit bash that into this train set and made an armor you know make an armor train uh, so this uh, scenario now you could use this armor train for you know bolt action and other games too anything that's World War One, World War Two, probably related to uh, would fit well I guess it could be a post-apocalypse uh, kind of game too. I really actually kind of like a Mad Max situation. <laughs> uh, but anyways, let's take a look at the finished product. Uh, so I've got four pieces here. So we're going to go look at the four pieces. So this is the main main engine here. I'm going to see if it got on here. So we got, I've got one uh, cannon bit up here. Definitely added some armor, some weathering camouflage. We're going to do the painting in this episode too. Um... So then uh, let's let's go to this next piece here, and got another uh, cannon on here, and a little bit of sandbags on the top, and of course you got to have an open top one, right? So this one has a, you know, a, some wooden planks in there, uh, sandbags on here as well, uh, and I, of course I measured it with my mini so they fit good in there. And then, of course, this is the uh, piece with, with the coal in it, right? That's attached to the uh, the main, you know, the main engine at the front. So those are the four pieces uh, that we're going to build. So we're going to take that Home Depot kit uh, and bash it, kit bash it with all those uh, model kits of, of tanks that I have left. All right, if you guys like what we're doing here in the Punter Den, make sure you smash that like button and consider subscribing to the Punter Den and get first-hand information when I start these kind of projects. All right, everyone, let's get down to the table and let's start making an arbor train. Okay, so let's start off by looking at some of the materials I used. Um, these are all these hobby wood that I've got from the dollar store. I got some squares and I got some insulation foam here. Um, some assorted balsa wood that I got from Amazon. Um, there's some uh, dowels, uh, some circular pieces, and we got some coffee stir sticks. And then I got some model kits. So you can see uh, they've been terrorized. <laughs> oh, look at that. We got a Nerf bullet. <laughs> uh, anyways, so there's little bits in here that we could possibly use uh, to uh, build this piece. This looks interesting. Maybe we can use this cannon here. Anyways, you can see that they're, these are old kits. Uh, I had them around as a 
as a kid. I just kind of, I don't know why I kept bringing them with me, thinking maybe one day I might be able to use them for something. So you can see I just got assorted pieces left on the sprues here. Um, but I wanted to use some tank kits um, and uh, see what I could come up with out of these uh, out of these sprues here um, to find the pieces that I'm going to need to, uh, you know, alter this train uh, to build the armor on it. So I'm just going to go through a few boxes uh, just to show you some of the things that I, you know, essentially what it looked like when I started. And I think these are, like, mixed up. I don't even think they're the right pieces in the right boxes anymore. But whatever, uh, we'll see what we could do with them. So I started off by just um, pulling everything off the sprues. I took some wooden pieces of the squares out, figuring I could use them as armor plates. These are uh, good pieces here from the, the tank that I can put on the engine. And I might end up cutting some of these pieces up, um, altering them to fit what I need. But you can see I just took a random pieces off the sprue. Anything I could find that was somewhat salvageable that I think I could probably use for um, this project. And I used some of these pieces, some of them I didn't. Um, but, uh, you know, these are pieces of interest, I would call them, <laughs> that I got from the sprues that I potentially could do uh, something with. So then let's take a look at the train. So this is the Home Depot train that I got. Uh, they they released some trains at uh, Christmas time. Uh, and this one's like 26 bucks, real good deal. And you get uh, four train pieces. Uh, and then you get a whole bunch of uh, uh, like tracks and, and power lines. And I think I'll, maybe I'll do a separate episode where I do uh, tracks and, and power line terrain and stuff like that. So uh, I'll probably use them in a future project. But in this episode, we're going to stick to the train. Uh, but uh, this is a fantastic set for 26 bucks. So let's take a closer look at it, pull all the pieces out. And the great thing about this is it's it's 28 mil. Like it, it fits uh, exactly what I need for the miniatures that I have. Uh, so it was the perfect size, um, which is fantastic. So I know I as soon as I saw it at the store, I'm just like, wow, this is perfect. Now, I'm going to have to get those stickers off, uh, obviously. Um, those are, you know, they're, they're going to be hard to peel off and, and uh, get rid of the goop, but we'll get some uh, goo gone and uh, get that stuff off there. But I'm just kind of showing you all the different pieces. You got an open open top piece. You got a couple of armored, uh, covered ones, one for the coal, the engine. You got some signs, and those are your bases for your power lines. You got some straight tracks. Uh, it looks like you can put a battery in there so to turn the light on in the front. I'll have to try that at a later time and uh, put the batteries in. But look at the texture on the wood there. It's really actually really good. This is this is a fantastic plastic uh, little toy, uh, but great for what I need it for. Uh, so, yeah, fantastic kit. All that for $26. And it even, you know, it even drives with a battery. But yeah, I'll have to doctor up those uh, power lines and stuff like that in a later episode. I think those will look fantastic as uh, some kind of other scattered terrain that I'm making. That'll be cool, uh, a different project. All right, so as I mentioned, I'm going to get these stickers off. So I kind of just picked them off. And you can see all, all this goop left on there. So I'm going to, yeah, <laughs> just showing you how sticky it is. So I had to use this goo gone. Uh, and kind of get the some of this stuff off. Now on on two of the other ones, they're they're not actually stickers. They're kind of like look like they're lasered on or whatever. But I I was able to cover that with paint, so it wasn't a big issue. So I was immediately drawn to that uh, uh, tank, that German tank there, and it had big armored plates on it. I figured it'd be perfect size for covering the tracks or like on this train and give it a real good armored look. So that was one of the first things that I immediately was drawn to. This piece looked very interesting. I, I kind of picked this piece up a lot, uh, but <laughs> I just couldn't exactly figure out how to fit it on there. Uh, but I ended up using that piece for something else. Um, but this one seemed very interesting. Uh, look, we could put a... I wanted to extend the front on the train. It looks a little stubby, and I wanted to extend it. And then I always thought of using these squares as armored plates uh, on there. Uh, on the sides of the trains to just, just kind of cover it. You got some tank uh, wheels here. You know, I was going to put some of them on maybe 
uh, over top. There's not as much detail on these, uh, well, where the wheels are. Uh, it mainly just a, kind of a cap, so I figured I could cover it with a few things. So then I kind of made the, this pattern here uh, with my plates. I wanted to make it look like it's overlapping. And I went to Michael's and got some of these uh, beads. Looks like I'm bejeweling this thing. <laughs> uh, but they make great rivets. So I'm going to use those little beads and glue them on with some white glue. Uh, and, uh, you know, just make it look like uh, steel plates with rivets. Now I found a little, uh, I don't know, just little details I'm going to glue onto this piece. But this looks like it fits nicely on the front there. So that's probably where I'm going to glue that. Now I kind of looked at that. Uh, those are some of the ideas I was working on. I kind of abandoned some of them as I went along. Uh, you can see that these fit on. I, You know what? I ended up hot gluing these on. Uh, it just dries faster. And, and wood to, to plastic is not usually the easiest thing to glue. Uh, but hot glue will pretty well glue anything together. I didn't want to try using white glue. It probably would work, but I just went ahead and used uh, hot glue. So we got a top of this little panzer tank here. Figured maybe I could use this as a kind of a turret. Uh, and I, originally I was kind of trying to get the gun at the front of the train. A lot of images I saw had it on the front. Uh, but I ended up putting it on the back. And you can see I cut that end off. Uh, the end is more World War II. So I kind of wanted to make it look more like a gun on a, something from World War I. So I, I snipped the end off. And I'm just showing you, this is the other kit. Uh, I used my little hacksaw blade there. And I kind of just sliced up the whole top of this, this tank into little bits. I ended up using all these little bits in different parts of the train. But I wanted to separate it all. Uh, I didn't want to leave it, obviously, as one big piece because I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to stick it on anywhere. But I wanted the turret originally so I can actually put that uh, on the top of the train. And then I was kind of looking at maybe I could use these on the sides, add details, more armor. Uh, so I kind of was deciding on that. So this piece I knew I had to cover that inside, uh, and I wanted to do wooden planks. So I got my coffee stir sticks out, uh, and I realized that there's those little nubs in there, and I need to raise it higher. Uh, and also I wanted to put sandbags on there, so I had to use the balsa wood to put an edging around the entire open piece so there's another piece i found i just thought it would be interesting to put it on there at the front where the uh the smoke would come out and you can see i started gluing some of those tank pieces on the sides uh just to add more details i added more sheets to the back just kind of covering where they connect to each other so it looks like a solid piece so i'm just showing you the hot glue which i mentioned already uh and also i used hot glue on those planks in there because, I, you know, again, I just wanted to glue wood to plastic. It's too hard with uh, the other glues. And I'm impatient. <laughs> so I hot glued those on. That worked out good. I like the way those uh, those uh, little beads look. And you can see I, I put on an edge there. Now I'm going to put on an edge on the inside as well. Uh, so I got a nice flat space to put sandbags on. And I'm going to fill in that bottom. Now I had to put a couple layers of, of those... Uh, coffee stir sticks because it was it was too tall for my uh minis to sit in and then i decided to make two more metal plates for the smaller where the coal is the other train piece and this is where i'm showing you i'm kind of using my mini here to measure and i realized that it's it's just not tall enough uh so i decided to add more planks to the bottom and of course i had to get it over top of those that little nub there so i kind of Decided to go with some square pieces to go over top of it uh, and then kind of add more uh, coffee stir sticks to the top. So I kind of just built it up really essentially. And it, it actually kind of added a nice uh, weight to the train piece too by adding all that extra uh, balsa wood. And even the hot glue itself adds a little bit of weight. So I found some more pieces out of the... And I just kind of glued them on just to make it look more interesting. Uh, really uh, just gluing stuff on to make it look a little more well, armored anyways and you can see i've added those rims on there now i've shown you how i made sandbags before on the channel here uh this is just insulation foam i cut it in strips put them into a little rectangles and then actually uh, cut them be you know another sh shape as well uh and 
I ended up using this piece just to make texture on it. Instead of the usual uh, screening that I usually use to uh, texturize my uh, sandbags, um, this little piece came in handy, actually. Uh, I didn't end up gluing it on the train, but I ended up using it to uh, texturize my sandbags. So that's kind of why I added that rim there. As you can see, I just wanted to add all my sandbags on there. So this fits nice. I've raised the floor. I've added some tank wheel details to the bottom and uh, kind of, you know, just gave us a little more uh, height to it. So you can see the miniature fits nicely in it now. Just uh, shoots over just over top of the sandbags. Perfect. I kind of left a gap in the center. So maybe if I have a guy that's sitting down a little bit, they can also shoot out that train. So then this is the other one I was working on. Uh, you ended up using that small cannon piece. Uh, and then I just added sandbags around the details. You can see I added some rope and uh, extra wheels. And then I added, those are tank uh, wheels on the top there that I used for smokestacks. I just wanted to raise them up a little bit more. But this is pretty much it. Uh, add a few sandbags to that. I've finished pretty well fabricating all of this. Uh, and it's ready for paint. So I'm going to use my Folk Art black craft paint uh, that I always use. Uh, and we're going to seal everything in nice and cover it all up. Now this is when actually things start looking coherent. <laughs> it always looks suspect before you actually start painting it. Um, but now it starts it's starting to come together. As all the pieces painted the same color, it all looks like it's part of the same thing, right? So um, now I can see it a little bit better. Um... And we've covered our bejewels, uh, and they look more like rivets now. <laughs> uh, but I think this came out great. I'm happy with the alterations that were made. Uh, and it gives it enough of a look to, uh, it. you know, it clearly looks like an armored train uh, opposed to just a regular passenger train or a cargo train. So then I moved to the real brown, and I'm going to under do the same undertones as I usually use. Um, and I really used a really harsh, well, I always say harsh, but with my big brush, uh, a dry brushing technique on here, similar to the, uh, the uh, bark that I painted. So if you want to see how I do that technique, take a look at the, uh, bark video, uh, and you can see how I, I painted. So I'm quite, uh, vigorous with it. <laughs> uh, and I like the way it leaves kind of just a little bit of highlights on there. Uh, and the real brown kind of looks really good on the black. It looks really... Kind of like an older metallic color, which is which is great. I always like putting earth tones down first. Uh, it makes it just easier to paint over top of. So I'm just showing you all the different pieces, what they look like, how much paint I added, uh, just so you can get an idea of uh, what I'm doing there. So this is the uh, next one, is Bark Brown, and it's a lighter brown, and we're going to put that on there. The only thing I'm not going to do is I'm not going to put Pablo on this time. We're just going to use, uh, we're just going to go up to the bark brown. So this has got a nice look to it. I really like the way it looks. Uh, just looks like kind of an aged metal a little bit. But I kind of wanted a brown tone. I decided I was going to do a green-brown kind of camo look to it. Um, and I just wanted to make sure everything was covered with that color. Now, it actually was kind of tricky painting underneath it. Um, but overall, uh, not too bad at all. Uh, craft paint sticks to, you know, it sticks to virtually anything. It sticks nice to this and it seals everything in those multiple layers, uh, adds a lot to it. Now the wooden planks, same as usual. I always lighten it in the center. Uh, and then I moved to some camel. Now this is more just to touch up the sandbags uh, and lighten them up a little bit. Uh, there's a little rope detail at the front here uh, that I added some camel to. Uh, you can see I've added sandbags, just three of the other cars. So we're just going to add that on there. Uh, so this is after. Uh, you can see that I've added those details on there. And I kind of just dry brushed on on those. You know, those sandbags are kind of, I went back and forth, back and forth, deciding what color to do them. <laughs> but anyways, I was pretty happy with uh, with that. So now I'm just going to use the, do the wooden planks as usual. Uh, this is real brown and uh, yellow ochre mixed together. Uh, and then I use yellow ochre on its own. So it's kind of a two-tone color and i've done that on the channel already i've shown you how to paint uh wood weathered wood so then i moved to army green uh from army painter i really like this color i've used it uh before actually I used it on the bark um actually but this would be perfect for this camo so i'm gonna just really just freehand this uh, and it kind of made kind of uh 
that was zebra stripes really <laughs> kind of thing um but i just kind of uh looked like the whole thing was painted so i wanted to carry over all the way through the train uh and i just kind of drew lines like this kind of uh, let me know where i want to go and then really i just filled it in that's all i did uh and it kind of just went through the whole train that way I uh, tried to touch as many pieces as I uh, can. Just adds interest to the whole train if you can if you can get lines going through the whole train. So this is an example. Uh, this is uh, the early stage of the one side, just so you can see what it looks like once I fill it in. And you can see I carried it right up to that railing. Uh, it just it adds a lot to it. All right, so we're just going to go through uh, assorted colors that I'm going to use to uh, weather this uh, train. So I got quite a, a bevy of colors here that we're going to uh, go through here. And uh, it's a mixture of speed paints. You know, we got some washes in here, some contrast paints. Malignant green is a speed paint. Uh, hardened leather, uh, sand golem, uh, uh, matte black. I'm going to use that matte black uh, to kind of put some details around the smokestacks. Hardened leather is kind of good for uh, making it look like there's raindrops or rust going on the bolts and stuff. Uh, and that golem, sand golem, I'm going to use that to lighten up the boards uh, in the weather train. So then we got some metallics. This is lead, uh, citadel. Uh, we got some uh, dry rust, army painter. Um, and then we got some other uh, rust, dry rust as well, a different brand. I actually ended up only using the Army Painter one. I really like the rust on the uh, Army Painter. That's, dry rust is awesome. And Agrex, Air Shader, uh, Skeleton Horde. Uh, the one I can't say, Scipion, Scipia, which I didn't end up actually even using that one. I, and then Mummy Robe, I was going to lighten up the sandbags a little bit with those. Which I ended up darkening them and lightening them, darkening them and lightening them. <laughs> I couldn't decide what I wanted to do with those. I kept changing them. And then I'm just showing you I'm going to cover everything. So we're going to stop at a few different colors and show you a few different techniques as I go along. Um, so I've used this hardened leather. Uh, and it kind of actually looks really good as uh, weathering where maybe the rain hit and uh, the bolts are starting to bleach or... Uh, some of the metals starting to rust somewhat. So even though I have rust as I'm going to add as a color, uh, I kind of wanted this to look like, uh, and I even added some of it to the brown too, lightened up certain areas. So I kind of just touched up different areas, and I just wanted to show you on the smaller piece, uh, just adding a little bit of, you know, just using a kind of a small brush here and just kind of making little stripes on there. It looks like there's some weathering on there, uh, some of the... the rust or whatever is bleaching through the bolts and stuff so i wanted to capture that or it's just constant dirty rain <laughs> leaves kind of like stains on it so uh, i like to do this on uh, i've been using speed paints a lot more um to do weathering more than uh, than my uh, uh contrast paints now so going to that uh lead uh, and really, I'm uh, just touching edges. So I, I got some of it done already, I can show you. And I'm just I'm just hitting some of the edges. Because over time, uh, you know, the paint chips off um, and some of the metal is uh, showing underneath. So I wanted to capture that uh, through this. And it gives it, you know, you know it's a, a metal piece when you add that on there. It just makes it look more metallic, the whole thing. Um, and uh, it's, uh, I think, an important step for weathering, uh, especially when you're doing tanks and, and you know, an armored train, obviously. Uh, but, uh, you know, some of the grids I want to show up and some of the details, some of the bolts. Uh, and I kind of almost do like a dry brushing technique on this. I just, but I kind of hit the edges, as you can see there, and just kind of add that detail on there. And uh, just really, it adds a lot to the overall piece, adding that to uh, back of the uh, metallics and it's okay if you kind of miss some spots and stuff like that it, it doesn't matter it, it you know there's certain areas would the the metal would be showing on it and some of it not but it overall it gives that impression that gives that a realistic look to it so then we move on to the dry rust now you can see how really orange it is it dries uh not as bright 
Um, but it, it really is uh, fantastic. I love Army Painters Dry Rust. Um, and this project gave me a good opportunity to put some on there. Now, this train's looking kind of weathered really badly. <laughs> uh, maybe it's not as new. Um, but uh, I, I love the opportunity to add weathering to something. It just uh, It's my favorite thing to do, really, uh, when it comes to painting. Um, so... I just touched uh, all sorts of different areas with that uh, dry rust. Just kind of where I think that uh, it would occur, usually in the edges and, and uh, down below things uh, where water accumulates. Uh, that's where you'd find the rust. But I just wanted to show you a few steps that I'd use to, to weather metallics. All right, so we got our game table all set up. Uh, we got our Germans uh, defending the train. So this is the End of Empires, a new Blood and Valor uh, expansion. And the Armored Train Attack is the scenario. So the train is in the center. One uh, side is defending the train. And the other side is uh, trying to capture the train. So um, I'm just going to show you the details of the train all completed. So I'm really happy how this turned out. I really like my weathering on it. It, it really has an uh, authentic look to it. Uh, even though... Yeah, the cannon probably would have been on the front of the train. Eh, whatever. It looks good. Uh, for what I need it for, it's fantastic. And like I said, you could use this for a bolt action or you're using it for apocalyptic kind of game. Um, so we're just going to the other side of the table. we got our French on the other side. Uh, and uh, I got the table all ready for uh, a match uh, using that uh, train scenario. Uh, I've been kind of going through that book and uh, we're trying to complete some of these uh, scenarios through terrain. I uh, definitely want to touch up that track though, right? Uh, as I mentioned in a future episode. And I keep calling them power lines, but uh, those are telephone lines. <laughs> uh, anyways, we're gonna, we'll use those in a future episode. All right, that's it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks so much for...